Hey followers, this is your boy, Movie Maker Doug 55 Today I have a very special guest with me, along with my coach, Andy McPhee. You guys might remember him from our previous episodes. Last week's interview with Richard Norton turned out extremely well. I enjoyed every bit of it, and today I have Kickboxing Hall of Famer, Jerry Trimble, with us. Welcome, guys. Yo. Yo. Yeah, welcome, Jerry, and uh, thanks, um, <coughs> thanks, Doug. Well, yeah. hey, Jerry, uh, I think we just got informed recently that you have been um, inducted into the Hall of Fame for kickboxing. Yes, sir, the World Kickboxing Hall of Fame 2019. Uh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, that, that, it was pretty cool. It was uh, pretty amazing. Got a beautiful belt. The belt is actually in my Los Angeles home, which is a lot bigger than the home here in Vancouver. So, so, so we've got Andy. You're in LA, right? And and uh, Doug, you're in Arizona. Phoenix is it Phoenix? I'm currently in, but that's a suburb of Phoenix. Phoenix, okay, Arizona, and then uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. So yes, <laughs> ah, yeah, cool. Yeah, love that's it, man. That's great. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. I'm uh, really looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Well, Doug, would you like to just uh, lead in with your question since it's your channel? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I have a lot of questions to ask you, but I'm going to have to limit it to a few due to time. But, Jerry, yes, sir. Uh, how did you get to where you are today? You're a world kickboxing yeah. hall of famer, an online advocate for anti-bullying, an actor, a stunt coordinator, and a national karate champion. How did you get there? Did you struggle with anything? Uh, <laughs> is that a trick question? Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I struggled quite a bit. Uh, I'm not a stunt coordinator. I'm a stunt man. Yeah, so just to carry fat. These guys oh. be going, what, is a coordinator? Oh, and you know, and I'll just slip one in. I'll slip one in in case you ever meet Jerry. He was an international champion. You better watch it, mate. He might... Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. you, you, uh, I was, yeah, I had some struggles, man. I had a lot of struggles as a kid. <clears throat> I was bullied nonstop. And, uh, you know, as a, as a kid, I, you know, I was a stressful kid. I had stre I, I, I was stressed out all the time. I had, I had depression, anxiety, and the way stress affected me was different than most people. You know, it wouldn't just eat me up inside. When, when I got stressed out, I broke out in cold sores all over my lips. I had rashes on my neck. I had acne that was really bad. So it got so bad that I would pretend to be sick so I wouldn't have to go to school for fear of being bullied. And it, I, it was relentless bullying all the time, constantly. I mean, I even had my own personal bully. His name was Mother Clayton. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to censor yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is clever. I have to give you one for that. <laughs> well, it's, you know, Jerry, it's funny what you just said. You said he was relentless, and the words we use in this is how we get from our circumstances by and be relentless and unstoppable, but your circumstances could be relentless and unstoppable, right? Whatever yeah. you're dealing with. Yeah, Can you just share a bit more about that, what you went through with the bullying? Yeah, uh, it, it was it was on a regular basis. And one day my dad, you know, I, I was beaten up by bullies and I, I ran home and I was crying in my bedroom and my dad came in and he's like, you know what, son, you got to quit worrying about what these kids say. And my, you know, I mean, he had an accent because I'm from Kentucky. So he's like, yeah. you, you know, but son, you, you know, you, you, you got to, you got to try, you got to find out what you're good at. You got to get real good at it. You just got to keep trying out things. Quit worrying about what these kids think. And, and then he said something to me that really stuck with me. He says, son, sometimes you got to be scared in order to grow. And I went, it was like a light bulb clicked in my head. So then I said, oh, okay. So I decided to try sports. I thought, wow, if I could do sports, maybe I can get friends and I don't know, and I wouldn't be bullied and people would like me and I would fit in. And, you know, and I hate that fit in. Everybody wants to fit in. No. Mm -hmm. So I tried sports and I quit every sport I tried. But it was one day after football practice where I get the, sh get the shit kicked out of me by a bunch of football players and my personal bully that threatened me and told me to quit. Quit. They said, man, Trimble, you get quit the team, man. Get up. We don't want you on the team. So then I went home and um, I, I took all the money I had, which is about nine bucks, and I, um, I w went through the streets of Newport. I actually ran away from home 
contemplated suicide. I've contemplated suicide numerous times, jumping off the, one of the bridges. There's a lot of bridges in my in my where I was born from that mm -hmm. would separate Kentucky to Cincinnati, Ohio, and there was about three bridges. And I contemplated jumping off the bridges quite often. And it, I was just walking through the streets trying to figure out what the hell I was going to do. I was 13 years old, you know, and it was it was bad. And I found myself looking up at a movie theater and uh, it happened to be a Bruce Lee movie. There was two movies at the movie theater. It was Planet of the Apes and then Chinese Connection, which is also known as Fists of Fury, starring Bruce Lee. Guess which one I chose. <laughs> <coughs> so I went in, I snuck in, 13 years old, went into the theater. When Bruce Lee jumped onto the screen, man, something sparked in me that I never felt before. And it just, it changed my life. So I go home and I ask my dad, I'm like, hey, dad, uh, I saw this guy, he was, he was doing karate, kung fu, I don't know. Uh, hey, dad, can I do karate? My dad looked at me, he's like, hell no. He goes, you quit at everything you start. He, and I was like, yeah, he's right. I did quit everything I started. So I took all the money I had, went to the magazine store, and I bought every martial arts magazine I could buy. And I took them home, put them all over the floor, and I started practicing via the Mark Magazine Master. And I was just practicing and reading the articles and looking at the pictures. And um, I just put everything I had into it. And then about two months later for my 14th birthday, my parents, they heard me jumping around upstairs, and they're like, what the hell are you doing up there, son? Uh, I'm like, nothing, Mom, nothing. I'm just, hey -ya. They're like, you got to be quiet. So then my uncle um, came to the house, and, he, and my mom and dad, because he was a kung fu practitioner from the Navy, and uh, my uncle Leroy, and he's like, you know, you guys said Jerry's like really into this karate stuff. They said, yeah, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's just doing magazines and so uh, my uncle said, let me take him down to the school that just happened to open up within two miles from our house. <clears throat> so he took me to the school. I enrolled, and uh, I trained six days a week. I went every single day. My dad would drive me, drop me off at the karate school. I'd, I'd, I'd take class. He'd drop me off two to three hours before, and I would watch the other classes, and then I would stay for the last class and take the class I was supposed to take. And then um, – and then I'd, uh, you know, uh, you know, it was like every single day, man. And then uh, Monday through, it was Monday through Saturday, Monday through Saturday, yeah, that I trained. Wow. And I just put everything into it. It's what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So I put every damn thing I had. <laughs> That's great, wow. man. And I just have yeah. to make note of that. Yeah. I've started body. Whoa, how often do you train? I train twice a week. Nice, nice. And, and, and you were at one time, how much did you weigh? 320 pounds, and that was because I had a sugar addiction. Sugar addiction. Wow. And how much do you weigh now? I weigh 220. Wow. wow. You lost 100 pounds? Yep, since Christmas. Dude, that's, that's a badass. That, and you know what? That's the same discipline that I put into martial arts. If you want something bad enough, all you got to do is just say, just make a decision and go, I'm going to do this. And you have to yeah. push it. And you got to have a good support team. And the fact that, Andy, how long you been training it, coaching uh, it? We've been together probably four years. Maybe it's getting a bit longer than that now. I started coaching his brother for acting. And um, then it, he didn't want to do that anymore. And then Doug and me just started coaching. And it just wow. turned into this whole different journey of, wow. you know, um, just, really, it's just like if you can say life coaching, I guess. You mm -hmm. know, the boot camp sergeant. I, I, I just say, dude, you need to do this. Get it done by next week, and that would be it. And he wow. would. But the thing is, he wanted to do it, and that's that's the whole problem. Sometimes people don't want it. They, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I can't get out of bed. Or I, I've got a young guy I'm coaching in Melbourne at the moment, <clears throat> and um, all I want him to do is get out of bed and walk ten minutes. Come home, shower, go to work come home and do one of these. He's got a free app on his phone where you do little body weight exercises. But every day he's coming up with an excuse, you know, like, oh, I turned the snooze off. I said, oh, okay, I've, I've, got, um, I've got a tip for you. I said, stop being a lazy, you know what? <laughs> I said, put the phone 20 feet away from you and just get out of bed. I said, I don't care how tired you are. I don't just care. so you know, Andy, cursing is allowed on my channel. No, oh, I better yeah. not curse, mate. Um, but yeah, that's and, all it, mate. You want to do it or you don't. 
you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, and you, you're his, you're his, you're Doug Sensei. There you go. That's yeah, that's it. Well, the funny thing is, and, and yeah. I don't want to distract from you, but it was the same for me, mate. I did judo and then I did pro wrestling and then it changed my whole life around. I went into other things if it wasn't for the martial arts. So I'm not saying yeah. martial arts going to twist everyone's life around, but the point is it's doing something that you love. Exactly. And Doug loves writing, you know? Mm, that's um, exactly, yeah. doesn't yeah. have to be martial arts, but no. you, you, what Confucius says, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Yeah, that's yeah, it. that's right, because you love it, you know? Yeah, you love it. That's, Jerry, one yeah. question, how yeah. did that yeah. end up at school with the bullies once you started training all the time? And Ooh, my, you mean the bully? <laughs> 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 it's I got yeah I actually saw him about three years ago in a restaurant. Well, I'll tell you that story later. Uh, you know, after I got into the martial arts, <clears throat> trained every day, and it was in the locker room. After it was in the locker room, um, was it, it, it after gym class? There was about must have been 20, 30 guys in there, and then I'm in the I'm getting stuff out of my locker, and I was a blue belt. Uh, I was a blue belt at the time. And and I'm and I see him in the corner of my eye, and I'm like, oh shit, no, oh god, no, please God, no, no, no. Uh, and he comes up to me, he goes, and I turn around to leave. He goes, Trimble. He goes, what do you think you know karate now? You don't know shit. You're just a candy ass pussy. He goes, come on, man. And, and I and I'm like looking at everybody, and, and I try to go around. And boom, he pushes me, and I'm, he's like, come on, man. This is what are you gonna do? You gonna do some chop sucky stuff on me? Come on, man. Let's see what you got. And I'm like. And I walked around him, boom, he pushes me again in the locker. And then he leans in and he goes, let's see what you got, pizza face. And I lost it. And I just went, uh -huh. just, boom, 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 <clears throat> boom. And, and vaguely remember any of it. It was just a blur. But all I know is afterwards, man, I was there standing there like this going, ah. I was, I, I was, my hands were moving like Bruce Lee and I was like, <laughs> and everybody was like, oh shit, Trimble's possessed. <laughs> and, 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 and after that, I was never bullied again. Never. Yeah. And you know, like, that's just the way it is, you know, like some people can take that as well. Then you just did what he did to you, but you didn't really, you stood up for yourself. You try to avoid it. And sometimes yep. you, you don't turn your back. You can't turn your back. Sometimes you have to take care of whatever you got to take care of. You know? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have no choice, and I had no yeah. choice. I mean, yeah. you know, the next and one could have been he could have hit me and hurt me. Of and, course, and yeah. you know, like, but <laughs> after that, you became someone people looked up for, and I'm sure that you started yeah. gaining more friends. Going, what are you doing? How did you do that? And mm -hmm. you, you could encourage other people who've been too scared to do something, and they might have taken up martial arts or, or whatever. Yep. 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 Yeah, it was funny because I, I did a uh, my first martial arts demonstration that I ever did. It was at 15 years old at a high school, <clears throat> and and this is when I knew that I wanted to like be a motivational speaker and wanted to talk to kids and work with kids. Is after the after the I did a demonstration. I broke boards. I talked about martial arts and motivation, and uh, the kids were coming up to me that were like my age and older, going, "Man, that was great, man. Whoa, you, you really inspired me, man. I, I want to do this, or you know, I wanted I want to like learn this and." It's and what you just said. It's it's not about martial arts. It's about finding something you love to do and, and giving it your all. And when you do that, yeah. everything confidence and everything happens, man. Yeah. Hey, well, look, you know, and this. Sorry, Doug. I'll just quickly jump into this. Hold that question. Um, a friend of mine. He's got a, a podcast going at the moment. Uh, he's a, a young guy I know from Israel. He was a tank commander during you know their war conflict there. Anyway, he ended up in a wheelchair because their tank got blown up. And he said one of the it, – it's actually funny what he said. Um, in his blurb on uh, Facebook and emails he sent us about his new podcast, he goes, you know what? It was very long, but one of the points in there, he said, I'm really scared of what people are going to think of me starting this podcast, of me – you know, getting on doing this, like video and what, what do people think? What if they don't like it? And he said, yeah, when I faced my enemy in the war, I was not afraid of anything. He said, how ridiculous. I'm afraid of an unknown person who could write something nasty about me, mm. right? Just, oh, I hate, I hate the podcast. I hate the video. That's just part of being strong and going forward, brushing <coughs> it off. Not everyone's going to like it, you know? It, it, it doesn't it, matter. 
Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and funny thing is, I mean, I've been there, done that, man. I mean, whoa, whoa, yeah, terrified to death thinking of what other people are going to judge me. And it's we are worthy and we are enough. And we all need to think, realize that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, can I yes, just sir. tell you something very quick? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't watch this show anymore because I'm not a big fan of the of the shows but that are similar to it. But do you watch American Dad at all? No, I don't think I've seen that. No, Amer I, I know of the show, but no, I, I'm sorry. No, I don't think I've seen it. No. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of American Dad, Family Guy, and those types of shows. But there was there was an episode of American Dad that I actually did get a kick out of. It, yeah. it was called A Bully for Steve. And basically the dad, Stan Smith, he tries to toughen his son up by being his, his high school bully. Right. And what happens is Steve, he responds by calling his dad's own bully, Stelio Contos, to beat him up. <laughs> and there's a very catchy song that plays as he does it called, and it's Stelio Stelio Canto Stelio. <laughs> and it's, I'm going to have to show you that video, but that, I got a kick out of that. Yeah. Even I'm not the biggest fan of it. Oh, that's funny. So the dad pretends to be his bully and then he gets his dad's bully to beat him up. <laughs> that's the way yeah. I love it. Okay. Song is, hey, hey Doug, Doug, have you got any more questions for Jerry, mate? So we don't uh, run out of time. I know you'd love to keep singing and you sound great, but let's move on. Okay. It's, uh, uh, what made you get into acting? Uh, when I became world champion, <clears throat> right before I became the world champion, I had a promoter that signed with me, and he said, listen, man, after I signed with him, he said, after I get you the world title shot, I'm taking you to Los Angeles, and I'm going to put you in the movies. All you got to do is sign right here. I signed the contract. He gave me a brand new car, which was gold, as I was the golden boy. And got, I got a world title shot. Everything was great. I defended my title for a few years, for four years. And then I got wrapped into the wrong people, got into drugs and stuff, and had a drug overdose. And then after that, I was hitchhiking down Florida and had an epiphany at 3 o'clock in the morning on uh, Alligator Alley, they call it. And the epiphany was to get out of Dodge, get away from the people I was around, go to Los Angeles, California, get in the movies. So I went back to California, or went back to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, sold everything I owned, and I went to California and started teaching for one of Chuck Norris's karate schools. Found an agent there. He was a, man he was a manager. Sent me on my first two auditions. I booked both lead roles as the lead villain. The first one was with Jet Li. And then, the, the, yeah, the second one was with Bolo Young and Jonathan Key Kwan. And uh, I started working ever since. And oh, I just, Jonathan yeah, Key Kwan? He from went uh, Indiana short Jones. Round. What's that? He was short round in Indiana Jones. Yes, exactly. Super, he, played, believe, he played my adopted son. <laughs> Kalima. <laughs> Kalima. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. And, and hey, I, Jerry, that, that story about, you know, that little – loop in the middle where everything's fine and you got out of the bullying and you, you you've created a great career for yourself but all of a sudden then that thing happened what do you you did say it was the wrong crowd and we've all done that like you know um i i get that i've been in that journey myself you know yeah. mm -hmm. but what what got you into it and how hard or how easy was it for you to that epiphany was yes but how Easy was that or how difficult it was for you to just pull away from that and go? The only way that I would have survived, <clears throat> because I was, I, I moved in with a, a Glenn Hughes, rock and roll legend from Deep Purple and Black Sabbath. We moved in together. or He had a house that I moved in. I was his bodyguard. I was his personal trainer. And then we became just really good friends and we were partying constantly. And then at, mob bosses and everyone wanted to be my friend. Got way out of control. <clears throat> and, and I have to say that every time that I was training for a fight, I trained religiously and I didn't party. I was disciplined. But once I had no fight coming up, I was just, it was just all fun and games with women and with drugs and partying and crazy stuff. So I got into it. it, it how easy was it to get out? How hard was it to get out of it? it, it after the drug overdose, 
hitchhiking, I knew that if I stayed in Atlanta, Georgia, I would have. I, I was going to die. I knew that it was either get out of Dodge or stay there and just go down this hole and just get deeper and deeper. So I just that's when I said I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision to get away from the people I was around. There's a saying that says, "Show me your crowd, and I will show you your future." And my yeah, crowd, yeah. my crowd, and my future was looking very bleak. You know, yeah. I, I was, you know, I was a world champion, but it was like, oh, okay, great. I, I, I don't know. I was, I was just, I was so far gone and so far out of control. But I yeah. had to get away. And once I got away, it's funny because when I moved to moved to uh, Los Angeles, California, with my best friend, who was a musician, who is dead right now from a heroin overdose. He was three days away from signing a multi million dollar record deal with Capitol Records. His name is George Bache. He was an amazing musician. Mm. Died of a heroin overdose. Wow. Yeah. So I, yeah. Once and once I got to Atlanta, or once I got to Los Angeles, I had the when we first moved there. What do they do? They have a party for us. And what do they do? They start bringing out drugs and shit. And then that's when I went. I got to move, dude. I got to get my own place. I can't. I can't live here. So then yeah. I, I. That's when I found a job. The thing is, what I realized, the same kind of pattern that I know with me, and in, in, is. When you, if you really want something bad enough and you put the energy out there, the universe is going to find a way to give it to you. So I, I, really want, I really wanted to change. I wanted to get away from that crowd. And when I started doing that, that's when I, I opened the Yellow Pages up, which is the phone book back in the day. I found the karate school. I started teaching for Chuck Norris' studios. Then I, I found the manager at the studio, started doing that, got away from the people, found, got my own place, got my own car, and everything started to change. And I started, my new crowd was, was you know, was, was, were all these people yeah. that wanted, they wanted goals and dreams. Yeah. And that's amazing because, you know, just another thing too, you, you know Richard Norton, of course. Yes, I love Richard Norton. That guy's yeah. amazing. And, that, and that's the funny thing because I met you at an acting class, yep. but then the dots started joining and now... Richard, I met him on a, a film, The Condemned. But it's like you just said, it, the universe will bring everybody into you. Yes. If you've really got the intention. Now, when you said it was you had to get out of Dodge, I would refer to Doug as when he was in deep depression and anxiety and ended up in hospital twice at the age of 16. Somewhere in there, I would suggest, Doug, that you had to get out of Dodge, meaning you yeah. had to get out of that. Your dodge, your drugs were the depression, not feeling, not fitting in. Your autism was your drug in a way, you know, like it's the thing that you allowed to pull you down. But you got out of dodge. And, and, and how did you get out of dodge, Doug? How did you move forward to get out of that, to get where you are now? Well, first of all, one of the things I didn't like about the hospitalization, as I told you, was... I had to watch shows like Barney and the Teletubbies because the kids were younger than me. Mm. <laughs> but after that hospitalization, I, I just didn't want to feel bad anymore. I wanted to enjoy life again. And yeah. so when I graduated from high school, I went on a journey to rediscover happiness. And I discovered that what makes me happy aren't personal possessions. It's experiencing things like going to national parks and going to NASCAR races. And when I go to NASCAR, I've had a streak since 2015 of meeting at least one driver per race that I've gone to. And that's always made me happy. Mm. And you interview those drivers as well, right? Yes, on my channel. Yeah. Oh, my mm. God. That is so yeah. cool, brother. So it's, it's a great analogy that, Whatever you're dealing with, we all have to find out, you know, it's time to get on that horse and get out of Dodge because otherwise, it's, it, it's sadly, it's, gonna, it's not going to end up good. Not um, going to end up good at all, no. It's not no. going to end up good. And, and Jerry, how did you, how did you um, keep on that track? You know, once you got yeah. on that good track, was there any temptations at all that come in but you were strong enough to go, nah, like, and then, then you started mentoring you know, youth and, and talking about bullying and, and that grew into another year. How did all that start? <clears throat> well, the, the, the temptations, <laughs> temptations were constant and, and it, temptations were constant and they kept coming my way. And what kept me strong and what kept me disciplined was to keep focusing on exactly what I wanted was to, vi and I, see, the thing is, 
as I started going down that hole in, in, in Atlanta with the, with the drugs and the, and the bad people and stuff, once I started going down that hole, I noticed that I stopped working on myself. I stopped meditating. I stopped visualizing. I stopped journaling. I stopped doing all these things that were helping me, helping me to communicate with myself. I basically got away from myself. And yep. then once, once I moved to Los Angeles and I got into an acting class, and I started hanging out with different people. I started, once again, writing in a journal. I started visualizing, meditating. I started really getting back into working on me. I started training. I just, when we work on ourselves and we work on everything about, you know, that, that is good for us, it's, you just, you, you, your energy change, your aura changes. Mm -hmm. And I just started putting more time into myself. And that enabled mm -hmm. me to be able to resist temptation. What do they say? Yeah. Temptation resisted is a true measure of character. And before yeah. my character was gone, it was not, I didn't like my character. I didn't like who I was. I started yeah. liking who I was again. I started putting time into myself. I started working. And also you said the vibe, you know, your, 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 your tribe is your vibe. You've got to, you've got to mix with good people. I mean, you yeah. know, I turned around to Jerry in an acting class and I, I just straight out said, hey man, are you a fighter? That's what I said. That was their introduction. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, I am. And that's how we met because just be authentic, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I, I had a feeling he was and I love the fight game I've been in and that's how we became friends. So yeah, your yeah. Bible and we've been friends for a really long time now. Long time, man, long time, yeah. I mean, it yeah, it, it's, it's what, if you want it bad enough and you just put forth the effort, you know, it's, it, I'm not a religious guy, but I'm a quotes guy. And one of my favorite yeah. quotes is from the Bible, Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you will receive. Ask the universe. Pray whatever you pray to. You know, ask for it. Ask for it. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Seek. Put the energy out. Learn about it. Study it. Knock and the door will be open. If you ask for it and you seek it, you learn about something, you keep asking for it, and you put the energy out, the opportunity is going to come there. That door is going to knock, boom, you're going to open it up, and man, the opportunity yeah. is going to be there. So you, what you put out, you get back. That's it. Yeah, and then, 100%. And, and that's where Doug is too at the moment like he's um he's growing every day like every single day like this okay i we organized this i said doug we need to get your story out and doug edits everything he does flies like he's doing everything and you know it's not about being the best quality videos videos it's about sharing real stories that yeah. someone might never have heard of someone and go wow man that's a cool i, I relate to that yeah this is if we can help someone out there go wake up wake up what are you doing you know exactly. i got it exactly that's what this is all about and everybody's story is powerful everybody's yes you know? Every, everyone has a story yeah and then, you know, well, um you got any more questions just before we finish up yeah what do you what what my question is what do you advise on becoming a background actor for hollywood a background actor for hollywood okay is it are you speaking for yourself yeah, because I want to get into background acting. Okay. Uh, why? Just curious. Yeah, I'm just. I always ask that. Why? Mm. I want to get involved in the film industry. I'm already a screenwriter, but now I want to get into actual background acting. Background acting. Well, I mean, there's the guy to talk to right there. I'm sure he can dial you in with with some possibilities. Uh, you know, with, with the entertainment business, Google it, research it, study it, find some. The, the fact that you're putting it out there you're going to come across someone that's going to be able to dial you in. There are agents for background actors, correct, Andy? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, it's a good place to start, you know, yeah. start a background and get to know the, the, the layout of everything, like start at a white belt. You don't mm -hmm. start at black, you start at white. Exactly. So, you know, background and when you love it, like take classes and who knows what happens. You just got to keep the intention going, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, check out my screenplay that I published this year. Yes. What, what's it called, Doug? It's called <laughs> Ray Guns of Kronos, War on Claudiusville, Part 1, The New Heroes. How long did that take you to write? Four months. How many pages? 715. <laughs> 715. How many pages? And here's my other one, Mose and the Great Escape, based <sighs> on the biblical story of Moses. Can well, you I know that one there. Is? He wrote in a month, and it's 520 pages. Dude, you are a superhero, brother. You are a rock star, man. I find writing really hard. I like know, it's just I something know. I'm 
yeah, it's not my best passion, but you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just with me, it's it's delegating the time. There's so I've got so many different things and so many different areas working on. But we we just moved, so I'm in a new place right now. Uh, yeah, which is that's why you see nothing on the walls. It's pretty empty. But now that I'm getting organized and I now have a bigger office, everything is uh, going. Oh, to great! Be fast. I and thought then, I thought you were just a broke actor, mate. You couldn't even put photos up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, we were downstairs, and we moved from downstairs to upstairs, which is a much bigger place. We got a fireplace, we got a backyard. We ah, got cool, man! So nice. So yeah, so now I'm a little more organized, and hopefully next time. Yeah. I call you guys, and I'll it all okay. started, Jerry, from when you're a, that kid at school who relentlessly got bullied, that got tired of it, and and you end up where you are now with a life that you're creating. You know? Yeah, it's it's I'm blessed. That's it. I yeah. So blessed, man. yeah. Well, Doug, I, you can sign us out, man. Jerry, truly, man, really appreciate you coming on and sharing. You know, I know it was yeah. a quick life story, but it's enough to inspire. And, you know, it's go, it's going to hit somebody out there. It hits me. It's great. I love hearing it. You know, yeah, we'll, do, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do yeah, it again. Sure. Yeah, let's yeah. do it again in the future. And this yeah, time, we'll do, do a bullying, anti bullying message. Anti -bullying yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Specifically on bullying. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I'm in, I'm outspoken against bullying myself. You know what? It's funny. I, I, not funny. I, you know, I, 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 I hate bullying, and I used to say I hate bullies. But you, we weren't born. We weren't born a bully. We weren't born bully. We weren't born mean. We weren't born angry or negative. We weren't born with all these you know issues. We learned them, and if we can learn them, we can unlearn them. So mm. people that are bullies. You know, they just, they got issues. They got problems and shit. They can be changed and stuff. And that's why working with kids that have been bullied and then working with kids that are bullies. I love yeah. working with kids that are bullies. Uh, I love working yeah. with both, both realms. But it can be fixed. Yeah, yeah. I'm it with you. It can be fixed. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Jerry. Appreciate it, mate. Doug, thank you, thank you for sharing your bits and sign us out, mate. So, everyone. Let's thank Jerry Trimble for coming on board. He's a great guy, and I got a kick out of him. And please, whenever you have a chance, check out my book on Amazon, From yes. Green Flags to Blue Flags 2, The Amazing Comeback of an Autistic Spokesperson, which it. is in the top 15 in the United Kingdom for special needs biographies and the top 5,000 internationally. Woo! You're my hero, brother. You are my hero, man. Yeah. Thank you. Good on you mate. You're, you're a great role model. Keep it up. Both of you guys are great role models. Keep it up. Yes. Yeah, you too, Jerry. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Mate. Take Love care. You guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. You too. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.